this is about uh, trans activism and its place in history. Uh, so where did trans activism come from? Obviously it came from the gay lobby and the victory of the gay lobby, uh, which got gay marriage and adoption rights and so on. Uh, but victory is disappointing. Uh, victory involves a loss, strangely enough, of outlaw status to the combatants, to the victors. And the gay lobby had been uh, glamorously downtrodden for all of its existence. Uh, and suddenly it was equal with everybody else. Uh, and to be gay and to be white meant to be privileged, which is embarrassing. So uh, they sought a new identity that would uh, provoke hostility and make them rebels and outlaws again. Um, that uh, gave rise to trans activism, which has some very antique qualities to it. Uh, trans activism revives a prejudice from the 20th century. Uh, when I was a teenager, gay psychology wasn't properly understood. And it was thought that gay men hated all women, uh, apart from their mum, uh, who they put on a pedestal where her perfection uh, was shameful to all other women. That's how gay psychology was conceived in the 1970s. A gay man idolised his mother and blamed other females for not matching up. Uh, actually, husbands were supposed to think like that too. And uh, sometimes they are still accused of doing so. And gay men were also supposed to hate women out of sexual jealousy. Women remove straight men from the cattle market and gay men resent them for that. This is a false prejudice, of course, because uh, women and gay men get on fine. And uh, a woman with lots of uh, gay friends even attracts a label, a fag hag, although that's not used so much nowadays either. Uh, but this prejudice about gay men's misogyny is back. Trans activists um, overrule women. They silence women and they claim sanctuary in women's changing rooms and refuges. Sanctuary, by the way, isn't a right, uh, but a favour granted by the holders of the space where sanctuary is claimed. Uh, and another old habit has been reborn, a fascination with etiquette and social pedigree. Trans women don't like the terms men in skirts, or drag acts, or ladyboys, or even men. Uh, they insist on the correct form of address, like uh, newly promoted aristocrats in 18th century France. And they think anyone who gets their title wrong uh, should be sent into exile, or arrested, as we have it today. Uh, and this war over women's changing rooms um, has revived another old practice, colonialism. Colonies were invented by men for the benefit of men and always with the same tactics. First, a dispute over territory. The dispute becomes an invasion. Uh, the invasion becomes a permanent settlement, and any challenge to the settlement is a crime. And that's how women's spaces have been colonized, dispute, invasion, settlement, and new laws to perpetuate the land grab, uh, which is imperialism, in fact, male imperialism. Uh, the only part of this war that is new is that never in history has one threatened minority claimed its rights at the expense of another threatened minority. That is new. But everything else is classic male behaviour, classic male aggression, um, classic really trans-activist aggression.